Hello everyone, this is Tim. Book one for this month is The Angry Book. As I said, this book comes in two sections. One where it points out um, the wrongs and then the other section where it deals with solutions. And so, oh, I didn't realize. Okay, section two is coming up soon. So let's get into it. Let's continue. Two big blocks. These are big destructive blocks to feeling and showing anger. Let's look at them one at a time. I call the first one the secret pact or the be a nice guy don't make waves syndrome. The terms of the secret pact are very simple. I won't get angry and therefore I will be sure that you don't get angry. The pact is secret because the other party, especially if he's a person who feels free to get angry, doesn't know it exists. In any case, don't make waivers are generally people who pre predicate their whole lives on personalities, on being nice guys, and on being universally liked. Of course, they feel that anger, especially if it shows, will destroy the image they live by. These people feel that any show of anger even minor irritation, will alienate the other fellow. This is seen as immediate threats or as an immediate threat to one's nice guy status and involves a potential loss of love. Since being universally loved is seen as the only way to be safe in this world, anger, especially anger that causes retaliation by the other fellow, is of course felt as a terrible threat. The nice guy is therefore forced into constantly playing a role. The price he pays for this role playing is enormous. He can never be himself and he expends enormous energy in attempting to fool himself and other people. Sadly, none of this works. He seduces no one into liking him. Those that like him will like him in any case and those that don't won't. Even more sadly, blocking off anger ultimately destroys the very thing the nice guy wants, namely love. But more about this and other destructive effects later on. Suffice it to say, or suffice it here to say, that the need to be universally liked, to ruffle no one's feelings, serves as an enormous block to the natural free, free fill and flow of anger. The other big block ultimately just as destructive is the mind your own business syndrome. The emotional isolationist honestly believes that if he doesn't get involved with other people, he won't get hurt. Of course, anger in any of its manifestations is seen as a threat to his non-involvement non status. He must not get angry, let alone show it, because this would indicate caring enough to get angry. He sees this kind of caring as leading to involvement, emotional snares, and all kinds of people traps. He would rather cool it and keep it safe. Of course, the ostrich phenomenon doesn't work. Man is a community creature and cannot function in isolation. However, ingeniously, the emotional isolationist plots his course, emotional investment in other people, and their investment in him will be inevitable. Basically, we all in it together. Um, the only effect cooling it will have is to deprive him of the enormous benefits healthy, open social intercourse brings. Cooling anger will also contribute to the many poisons I will describe later on. I want to close this chapter by saying that blocking anger makes us even greater, don't make waivers, and emotional isolationists, thus completing a very destructive, vicious cycle. One smaller block. The effect of this block are exactly the same in destructive value as those of the two big blocks. I call this one a smaller block only because people suffering from it have slightly less difficulty getting angry than those with the big blocks. The smaller block is the need for control or mastery. People who have this need feel, the angry, feel that angry feelings or a show of anger may be evidence of loss of control. 
since they predicate their lives and well-being on total control of themselves. Others and the total environment potential loss of control is invariably felt as a great threat. Unlike the previous two blocks, which operate mainly in people from, I mean, whom Horney calls self-affecting or compliant and detached or resigned, they don't make waivers, or the don't make waivers and the non-involvement specialists. This smaller block occurs mostly in expansive people, Horney's term, and does allow some feel and show of anger. However, this is seldom a healthy, warm anger, which I will describe later on. Expansive anger is usually used in the service of sadistic manipulation or outright bullying and controlling people. It is often dished out under the guise of benevolence, but it always involves domineering despotism. It is also used in conjunction with vindictiveness sometimes providing the sick energy necessary for vindictiveness to take place. This sick and synthetic anger is stunted and distorted because of the victim's inordinate need to be admired, if not worshipped, as differentiated from being liked. Since real undiluted anger may result in a diminishment of admiration and is seen as a loss of control of oneself and others, it is blocked and viewed with fear and trepidation. Based on an individual's character structure, one of the three blocks will be used predominantly. However, use of all the blocks may be evident in the same person. So that's the angry book. And um, we're going to be moving into part two, um, perversions. So we're going to be dealing with what not to do. Great book. Not much else to say. Um, share this with your friends. We need this information. Um, and I thank you. Thank you for supporting. I have a new supporter. Okay. Thank you. And I appreciate it. And welcome. Um, and until next time, take care of your mind, take care of your body, and please be safe.